Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road. And that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. What? It's over the ball. Hi everyone and welcome along to the RTGA podcast. Lee Keegan is with myself and Rory to look back on round five of the Alliance Football League. How are you, Lee? Good, yeah. Yeah. Uh, tired after the weekend's action. Uh, okay. it's, all, it's all starting to heat up a bit. It is. It certainly is. Let's give you the headlines for people who may have not seen all the games. Derry falling to their first defeat. It was going to come at some point uh, at the hands of Dublin. Kerry bounced back with a great win against Tyrone. Galway picked up some vital points on the road against Monaghan and Mayo came out in that local derby with the Rossies, which I'm sure you've got plenty of thoughts on. But let's start with Derry Dublin because it seemed to me, Lee, even we were chatting about it last week. It was being billed as the game of the weekend. 13,000 people in Celtic Park. Not sure it lived up to the hype. No, Jackie. Um, unfortunately, I think with Derry in the position they were in and the seven changes before the game, and I suppose I was really excited to see the Collar Glass Fenton tussle, particularly when I see Glass then not or been rested, then that, that kind of indicated to me that Derry were probably looking at a down week. So and as well, I, I do think as well, looking at the Dublin performance, I, I think they give them a lesson as well. Why Dublin are top dogs, um, and we're why they're in the position they're in after the few games, and I think, listen, we didn't learn a, a, probably a whole pile. What I did learn is is I think teams have a, a, a quite a way to go to to get to Dublin's level, uh, and that's the worrying sign at the moment. And and what's scary from my point of view is, it's the Fentons, the Kilkennys, the Conor Callans that are really catching form, and you know these guys for me. You know, it's very easy for them just to say, you know what, I'm not feeling today, but they go out week in, week out and put in performances that you're just like, why? It's just just amazing. Uh, like Fent of the weekend was just awesome. Like Kenny for me has been probably the form player in the league at Lao Khan this year. His form has just been brilliant in the last few games. So it's um it the signs are pretty obvious at the moment. You look at when you look at the the way Dublin are going at the moment. Yeah. I, that's exactly the sense that I got, Rory, that this is a Dublin team who've just gone, right, we're back in business now. This is how we roll. It's And it's scary for everybody else, Jackie. The the glamour and the talk of the split Dublin in two could very well resurface. <laughs> you know, because... No, it, it no. Could, it could, it could, because you, you could potentially be looking at another era. I mean, you have to put it into context. In 10 years, they've lost two championship matches in Croke Park. They've lost two championship matches full stop. So the challenge will remain that they are the benchmark. I know Kerry are, we'll say, the the standard bearers for Gaelic football, but Dublin really are now and have been for 10 years and maybe more. And the fact that you have a new generation of leaders, as Lee pointed out in relation to Con, Brian Fenton and Kieran Kilkenny, who are playing great football, but now you have an, a whole new cohort of players that have bedded in Ross McGarry played reasonably well. Theo Clancy, I know he didn't start the other night, but they're expecting big things from him. Greg McEnany came on. Lee Gannon going off was a bit of a blow because he's one of the new players on the block and that looked yeah. like a, that looked like a hamstring. Um there was, you know, so there's a whole there's a whole pile of players. Paddy Small, I think, you know, is starting to really settle into the team. So they are rebuilding before our very eyes, effectively a new team again. And I think they've proven in the space of seven days, and I know they only won by five on Saturday night, Jackie, but they ripped the two main contenders, they ripped them to shreds. And that to me is a very ominous sign for everybody right. else. What's, what's, what's scary though is 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 we all associate Derry and Derry are it's not, there's no district Derry, Derry are brilliant side to say, okay, that's you know, we'll, I think we'll give them probably a bit of hope going into, into the next few weeks. But my thing is, Derry played this real hard running style. Um, Dublin are just happy to to let them do that. Yeah, they just you know, uh, and they don't let Derry plot and plan and and play the way Derry play. Like yeah, listen, Conor Glusky got a great goal. It was kind of a one off opportunity. Like you didn't see too many of them. You know, Shane McGuigan had this spectacular goal chance, but they're few and far between to be honest. And like the five point victory for me wasn't a five point victory. It was so yeah. much more comfortable. But the, the another scary thing is for me is you know James McCarthy, you know Clucks and Fitzsimons, um. Jack McCaffrey, you know, you're on the league, Gannon for me, fantastic player, brilliant footballer. 
But Jack Carter comes in and, and picks up that spot. Uh, Basquiat hasn't played. So Paul Mannion didn't play. Uh, Paul Mannion play. Like you're listening to a host of players that would walk into any elite intercounty team. And Can yeah. I ask you though, Lee, right? Derry also didn't have some of those key players. Correct. So is it like how how far of a distance do you think is between these sides if they have everybody has a full complement of players then? I still think Dublin are too far ahead, Derry. Do you? Uh, I, I, I really believe that. And I, I believe from the point of view is that I don't know if Derry's game plan has enough to evolve to beat Dublin. I just think Dublin are so well equipped to, to deal with that running game. Uh, and we've seen it for years. I, I just And the way Dublin are playing at the moment is, is scary from the point of view is that they're playing such attacking football. Um, I don't think Dublin probably got a lot of appreciation over the years for, for their all Ireland because it was very conservative very risk associated or assessed and you know like they always want to get to that that shooting zone they look like they're playing off the cuff they look as happy as I've seen them in a long time uh, just playing with that freedom so even I think with Derry's full complement I, I still believe Dublin are just too far ahead to be honest at the moment mm, Interesting because I do and, think I, in yeah. a way go on sorry Rory I was just going to say I, I, I think uh, maybe Mickey was thinking that's grand it's, a, it's only March we're fine with that and he probably had to really, Jackie, like the, the, the reality is if you look at Derry's schedule, potential schedule, if they end up in a league final, that's eight games. They might need three to go through Ulster if they want to go three in a row in, in the provincial campaign. Then you're looking at three round robin games. And then if you end up in a prelim quarter final, you're looking at four on top of that. So what's that? Is that 18, 19 games in a 26 yeah. in a 26 week period? He had no choice. And I think it was a wise decision because you have a down week this week now coming in as well. So you effectively you're giving lads two weeks break. And I think that was a smart move. But I mean, you just couldn't but be impressed with Dublin. They are regenerating. They are reinvigorated. They are they're inspired again. It's very early to be drawing any definitive conclusions about any of this, but I suppose if you compared it this to this time last year to some of the anemic displays in Division 2 against much lower quality opposition and what they're doing now in Division 1 all of a sudden by kickstarting their campaign the way that they have, yeah, scary. Yeah, great. Yeah. <laughs> no, but, but Jackie, I, I think what Dublin have done is is right. You take it their first two games, right? They lost their first two games, fine. By a point. By and a they, point. I, I, and they, did they really deserve to lose that and game? And the mo- sorry, the me- yeah, definitely. That was the one. But my point my point is is that it's like they're just giving the the, the carries and the dairies a bit of manners, saying, Do you know what I this is this is Dublin, this is what we're, we're gonna do this year. And and for me it's just in a little marker of maybe of things to come. Is that that Last year wasn't just a, a kind of one-off save for, for Desi and this whole kind of aura around it that this was the last dance, all that kind of stuff. Dublin are going nowhere. And they're, they're, they just look so good. And those players in aim as well, Roy, like they're just, they're embedding into the same kind of system and style that Dublin want to play. And, and it's great to watch. It really is. It is. It's 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 scary, but it's great to watch from, from our point of view. Yeah, they're great to watch. I don't think anybody yeah. can deny that. That's for sure. I think, look, Connor Glass and Brian Fenton, we'll have to wait for another few weeks for that, but I'm sure yeah. we're going to get it and it'll be rip-roaring. Let's move on to some of the other games then. Monaghan Galway, Lee, when you look at, okay, from two perspectives, one is Monaghan getting another trimming, which it absolutely has to be a concern. The other is Galway. After a really mediocre start, suddenly oh. they're finding form in a place where poor choice is, on, you got Rory Cunningham getting in and getting one three. He's suddenly find, starting to find a few players and I think he'll be happy enough with the way that they're yeah. moving now. Oh, Jackie, they'll be delighted. Uh, if you look at the players that are missing, um, I mean, again, you're talking about the elite players that go to have to come back and yet they're in a beautiful position now. They're not really looking over their shoulders much now and they have a crack and tie against Dublin now um, Saturday week as well. So, I think they're in a really good position. They love playing Ulster teams. Um, they yeah. really do. They have such a record. Poor Joyce against Ulster teams over this four year um has just been fantastic. So what do you put that down to, Lee? Um, I I, I don't know. I just I, I think it's just their system. They, they just seem to like playing Ulster teams. They seem to have the the pick of them uh, and they understand how how Ulster teams play and they always play with a bit of confidence against them. Now I would say Man and for me were, were really poor at the weekend. Um, yeah. I, I would have to say that. and there's a, from a few point of view as well is that you know you look at the three goals you can see in the first half I mean they were just shockers uh, I don't think yeah. there's any other way to to, to brush over it they're just they're, they're, well, they were they, all just route one weren't they they, they were they just were route one. one ball breaks bang 
like they're so preventable. Like, and that's the sign of where modern for me are at the moment. They're just so far off the pace. And even the second half, when they got somewhat back into the game, they conceded five or six frees. Uh, just kill yourself. Like, I mean, you're, you're playing a Gola team that, that again, people say modern are missing a lot of players, but so are Gola. But given Gola, like, some of the score or chance they got, I, I just think. They're so far off the pace at the moment where, where they need to be. And it's that that could be a little hangover from last year too for me. Uh, I thought they really competed well last year. You know, the whole... I, I always love the show with Manning in the league. And I, I really hope... I, I like to say we're wrong again and, and they'll say it. But, but, you know, you look at the, the signs of the moment. They just look at the team ready just to be... I suppose they're looking for that last blowout. So... Or knockout. So for me, they're they were so poor at the weekend. They made life really easy for Galway and Galway to be honest, just cantered to, to, to an easy win. So but from a Galway perspective, for me, they're in a really, really good position. Um try and get some of those key figure back now, like the likes of Comer, Welsh, Kenny McDade, um, Matthew Turney. I know that I don't know how snipping some of their injuries are, but getting those guys back now. Um different different year looking for Galway after it went one for me, you know. Yeah, it's amazing, the perspective for them. I'll come back to them in a second, Rory. I do want to pick up on what Lee is saying about Monaghan, though. You're looking seven points at the weekend. They lost by 12 to Roscommon, 13 to Derry, nine to Kerry, a cumulative loss of 41 points. So that one-point win over Dublin, suddenly they're looking at minus 40 of a scoring difference. Dublin and Derry are on plus 20. Like, you're 60 points swing. At some point, this has to be a... We just can't do this anymore because this is going to get away from them very quickly if they don't start turning it around. That is just too leaky for Division One football. It is, and the the bizarre thing about the way the rules are in in league football is the head to head comes into play. So their game against Tyrone in two weeks' time is huge because if they were capable of turning Tyrone over, and would you bet against Monaghan not no. to do that in a one off game? And potentially then save their save their division one status. You would not, but I'm not entirely sure if going down to division two wouldn't be the best thing for Monaghan. I think you, if you look at the age profile of some of the more established leaders, we know Kieran Hughes disappeared um, over the winter months. He would have been a big leader. Darren is, I think, is about 34, 35. Obviously, Rory Began, they lost. Uh, Drew Wiley, Ryan is, you know, probably not far behind him. So, like, there is a massive level of transition and counties with a smaller pick do find transitioning that little bit harder. And sometimes, like, if you even look at uh, Donegal, our classic example, where they've gone down into Division 2, they can give lots of game time to lots of players and still win. Mayo, a few years ago, Lee got relegated. I think it was during the COVID year where it was a truncated yeah. league season. And I think that saw the introduction of the likes of um, Ryan O'Donoghue and Tommy Conroy into the Mayo team. So, and then they, and they obviously still won and they obviously still got <clears throat> promoted. So I think Division 2 for Monaghan, if that's where they end up, isn't the be all and is, isn't some sort of doomsday scenario. And it could actually be... Uh, a, you know, potentially a help. I think they will kind of be in that top end of Division 2, even if they do go down. And it might be the worst place when you are looking to transition a team and regenerate a team and uh, give players time to adjust into county football. When uh, they do another Houdini, I'm going to play this back for you. Yeah. Uh, the latest man to write off Monaghan of <laughs> yeah. a uh, scrap in the league. Funnily enough, I, funnily enough, I thought that like... The- the two that I picked at the beginning when we spoke about potential droppies down to Division Two, it was it was Tyrone and Roscommon who I felt might might actually because uh, I just thought the farm farm of those two teams might and you know given the season Roscommon had last year in Division One the second yeah. season syndrome and all of that now it might that might still be the case yeah it's, it's, I, but it's not even the man it's it just it's it's the performance uh, exactly whatever it is now, it's, it just it just looks to me is that they're, they're really struggling to find any type of form consistency and their defense has just been appalling not not from one to six i'm talking overall collectively joe you know? and when i look at Galway, for example they, they have really good defense and, and one guy that i i really really impressed with over the league and if you look at the, the caliber of players market is johnny mcgrath and he picked up jack mccarran at the weekend again and did an absolute brilliant job he's a right tigerish cornerback and this is what i liked and i i probably was really sean mccurn and sean mccurn coming back into that defense brilliant. is another big one i think Lee. Fitzgerald as well full back good young lads and mccurn is a good leader um but for me johnny mcgrath has been the standard defender in, in the league along with mccluskey um just think he's been fantastic 
Um, and someone that I know may already be looking at that, you know, he'll pick up the likes of Ryan if that, that's the case later in the, in the year. So really impressive with the caliber of lads. And, and that's something that, again, I question really a, a lot against against Mayo early in the year where Gawler at. They really just went about their business, ticked off, and, and you know, it probably pains me to say it, but it's 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 great to have a competitive Gawler. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's healthy. You know, I know we have a big rivalry with Mayo, Mayo, but it, it's having a really energized Gawler brings a lot of... Um, Player to the championship, and and I'm be interested to see when the, those guys get back in there, how they're going to progress and and challenge from the championship. Yeah, and one the, key, and Jackie, the key is yeah. when when they get back. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Jackie, one of the things that uh, was I thought was quite striking when you were looking at the team sheets on Sunday was how inexperienced their forward line looked. And mm-hmm. they look the reality is they really are missing a lot of players. You have to give them that caveat to be fair to Park Joyce, and it has been hard for him to get any momentum into the team. But I think the flip side is he's getting game time into a whole host of lads yeah. who should be able to apply pressure on the established players when they do return. So I think Galway, I think Galway are in for are Galway in for an interesting year oh. just yet. Yeah. They've got Dublin and Kerry to come over the next couple of weeks, which yeah. will be a nice measure. And you would like for him yeah. to feel that he can get a couple of those players back, uh, even for one of those games, just to see where they're at, I think, you know. Well, champs are in the corner as well, Jackie. Yeah. It's, exactly. it's, it's, it's important to, for them to get game time because you're entering into the thick of it then. It's not a thing where you can just get up and run and you need to get those minutes in your legs. And I think that's why the league is really important this year is getting finding the balance of, of minutes and players and getting confidence built up as well. So it's going to be an interesting couple of weeks for Galway if they can get those back. Mm. Well, the uh, flip side on the other end of the table, you mentioned Tyrone, Rory, and it seems that Tyrone Monaghan game now in a couple of weeks just has that relegation scrap written all over it because Tyrone losing to Kerry, maybe it's not unexpected the way it happens, but it, I guess it's just another pull on that momentum swing that Tyrone probably just haven't found the rhythm that maybe they were hoping for three weeks ago. Mm, yeah. Um, it was a fairly harmless encounter uh, yeah. uh, that had settled into a routine game. With a few game. flashpoints. Yeah, it was a fairly harmless encounter that had settled in, exactly, and it had settled into a routine game and then a big load of arse boxing broke out right in front of the stand. I think stands are, they're like, they're like little honeypots for trouble because the crowd get going and the lads think that they have to react. Now, David Clifford probably exacerbated the situation. Let's be honest. And then just walks away casually. Yeah. And when like the mark, and it was a mark, was ruled a line ball. And then they had a second bite of each other. It went on for ages. And I don't think the lines would help all. All a bit silly. Yeah. 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 It it was was all a bit silly. A couple of yellows. But it did spark the game in a big way. And Mm -hmm. I thought, I thought, Definitely red cards coming here. It took a full three minutes, I think, nearly to start though, but it did get a big twist out of out of David, particularly and the Cliffords. Um, I think once the football then settled back down, uh, it was really plain sailing for Kerry after that. And I thought they made light work of Tyrone in the end. Uh, it was what was it, 12 6 at half time. And after that, then I think the second half just became non competitive. I know Tyrone got a couple of scores early on or later on to put a bit of a glass on the scoreboard, but I think it gave a false impression. Kerry were far the superior yeah. team over the whole game. Yeah. And like they probably needed to be as well, Lee, because just listen to Jack O'Connor talking afterwards. He used the word unacceptable for their performance against Dublin. He talked about some of the players getting stick. I think he really needed to see this from his team. Oh, I think that double game really hurt them. I really yeah. do. Uh, and I, I don't care if it's a league game or a challenge game when it comes to Kerry Dublin uh, and you lose in the manner Kerry did. Uh, they don't associate Kerry teams with that. So I think that really did stick with them. Um, and it was a positive response. And it's funny though, I, I, I actually thought Ty Rowan started really well. Mm. Uh, like in the first quarter, they looked hungry for turnovers. They looked like they were, they were building on the nail being moved for. As soon as the scuffle started, it's like Kerry just took complete control of that game. Um, and Tyrone just they really deceived flat in any like they didn't really challenge. Um, and I just thought they were flat for a lot of the game. Um, PD Harkin off injured again, another big loss, you know. Um, Coffee Smash went off as well. So, my problem with Tyrone is it's the consistency levels. It's like one good day, yeah, bad day, good day, bad day, and we're all waiting for the Darren Darren show. And when it didn't happen, it's like nothing happens really. Did you know it's 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 they're just scrapping and and. But that's what I mean. Like a few weeks ago, you watch them and you're like, great, brilliant. They're motoring now. I'd love to watch this team. And then the next week, they get pumped. You're like, what is going on here? Yeah, and it's it's it was a sign of last year as well. Jackie is is nearly the same kind of 
performances that they did and, and like everyone nearly gives them kind of a you know the leeway that gee that was a brilliant performance yeah then again they come in the last day and you know you're playing one of their biggest rivals and they're just they're just flat for for a lot of it um and i said like when they have players like a Derek Hannibal and a Derek McCurry but but their system doesn't allow them. Like I thought last week, the bit of gold dust and everything. I, I thought this is brilliant. Like we're going to see these guys really flourish this week, and you know they're, they're going to play a, a style of game that's going to suit them. Kerry just kind of rolled up, bullied them and rolled them over for for a lot of the game, and uh, you get start question then what what side of what type of attack and play or structure Tyrone are trying to imprint on themselves. And I don't really know, to be honest. I, I think they look a bit lost from game to game sometimes. You know, uh, like Darren McCurry came out last week, looked looked apart, looked really really good. He was anonymous then on Sunday, you know. So um I just I question Tyrone's overall attack and structure of their play and, and and what they're trying to implement because it looked it looked pretty flat on, on Sunday. And, and as you said, Kerry the Saunders victory and then for me, um and Clifford, the two Cliffords were brilliant. Uh, Gavin White was brilliant. And uh, their midfield, there's always a, always a question mark around Kerry's in field. I, I thought that they did really well on Tyrone's, and we always look at Tyrone's field of Fitzpatrick and Kennedy and, and how good they are. I, I thought Kerry dominated that to be honest right in the middle. Uh and it was great to see Clifford take take eight from eight of the game. I think he took took a lot of stick from from the Dublin game the week four, and yet he could have finished at one six, one seven. So um it's it's a sign of a guy that wants to learn, wants to evolve, wants to develop, and he and yet he's five all stars and two players a year. Do you know what I mean? So it's a sign of a guy that he wants to get better. <laughs> but I, I keep going back to one guy, and I love David Clifford, but Paulie Clifford for me is the key oh, to yeah. a lot of that. When when he's purring and things are going really well. And not so well. He's the guy I always looked at that, that's trying to turn the tide when things do, don't go well. He is just awesome for me. He really, well, he's, really is. He's like the Kiran Kilkenny role in Kerry. And like yeah. Conor Callahan doesn't look good if, if Kiran Kilkenny doesn't do that. And the same way with Pawdy and David. And maybe it's even more because they're brothers and they totally know where each other are. But like, it's just that perfect axis. Jackie, we we did a full focus on Paddy Clifford when we played the now the, the tenth is in the quarterfinal. I'm not saying that, but 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 our detail was to try and stop Paddy as best possible because he was the main outlet for ball inside to Sean O'Shea or or to into David. So I I think you need someone to tag him for for a lot of games because I just think it's important to carry his leadership. Um, and he's captain this year and he looks really comfortable as the captain. I think it's it's really suited him. I so pressed him against Mayo a couple of weeks ago. Uh, kicked four points and kicked three at the weekend. So. For me, he just he ticks all the boxes when Kerry going well, uh, and not so well. He's just their he's their main leader for me at times, and uh, probably just get the the same appreciation because of how good David is. But for me, he's equally as important and as good for for that Kerry team. Mm. One one player, just Jackie, that I just like to give a shout out to because he kind of goes under the radar and. Lee mentioned about maybe underappreciation was Dara Moynihan. Uh, I thought it was one of his best ever carry displays. Now, he nearly always gets taken off. And sometimes that's because he might have a quiet game, but I thought he was outstanding. Now, he got taken off again, but he got taken off to a rapturous applause from the stand. And like, obviously, the carry people, like, there's nobody can tell them about football. They know football. So uh, I just thought he put in an unbelievable shift. And he was rightly applauded by the carry supporters. He was coming off. It was. He was, it was real, he was, it was very Paul Galvin in the role that he played, trying to dive on dirty ball, really good kicking. He chips in with a couple of scores. He's exactly that prototype wing forward that they've maybe been looking for for a couple of years to really kind of find his wings. And I thought uh, Sunday was one of his better, one of, one of his best displays that I've seen from him. Yeah. He's definitely helping Kerry to move in the right direction and they look like they're safe anyway. So that's a one start for them. I guess it's now looking upwards as to what they yeah, want to do, yeah. which I think maybe might be the same position may or in Lee, because I think maybe the stop start nature of them, they were in the league final last year, league champions, obviously, and it didn't suit them for a variety of reasons. They're probably in a similar position now where they could find themselves in a league final if that's the route they want to go. I don't know. Where do you think Kevin's head is at right now? I don't think league final is what Kevin wants, if, if I'm being totally honest. And I think Kevin would probably say the same himself. Um, I don't think it's even a thing where Mayo right the week after a league final against New York. That's not even the issue. I, I think, for me, there's there's a couple things with Mayo this year. It is Yeah, I think the weekend was a big game for me. Get, get points. Uh, and it was good. It was a good performance. I thought Roscombe were very poor, particularly yeah. the second half. I thought, were, I thought they were very good in the second half. And... and very lack of effort and that's not what I saw say with Scammon, uh, especially Mayo game. So I thought Mayo did what they need to do. I thought just 
you know, it was a dirty night, um, just nice and professional performance and get in, get out. So for me, it's again the consistency of Mayo. I don't think we've seen in the league this year. Um, and as well, <clears throat> Jackie, what's probably worrying is again we didn't get a goal at the weekend. Um, so there is a lot of question around Mayo's attack and play, and you know, score 15 points is good. Um, but I would like to see more cutthroat up top. And what I don't know was magnificent the weekend, and I'm not getting that wrong, but I still. They look at their four play, I think to myself, can we get better? Um, you know, we're missing by Dirk and Jeremy Connor. And sometimes that's not a bad thing. See what we can do and what we can look at from a four perspective for the ball had a good game the weekend as well. So I, I, I don't know if a league final is what they want, Jackie and Tony Ellis. Um I think they're happy. Where are they gonna get points. them scores from then that you're talking about? I, I don't know. I don't know. Um it's it's always the big question mark. Um like even you look at their stat. Now actually I read a really good stat. Tyrone have a worse goal record uh score goals than, than Mayo. I think they were second. So but my, my point is it's it's people will always say Mayo do not have that marquee forward. I, I think we do have it. It's it's how we play into their strengths and their and, and work them into the game as best as we can. You know, like Shane McGuig at the weekend, he scored seven, but it was all overall for him. I think sometimes we can do more to, to get Ryan on the ball, get him in those positions instead of having Ryan chase back 30, 40 yards. You know, don't like you don't see Clifford do that too often because where is he more dangerous? You know, so my point is we can play a better system to 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 help our forwards, I think. Um so I think from the male perspective, I think it was really important to get two points to begin. It makes us more or less safe now. So they can start kind of plotting and planning. Uh, they're gonna have a tough test against Derry. I think they're gonna put out a full spot for that game. So that's gonna be a really interesting battle for me. But from my point of view, is how serious are the injuries that Jeremy O'Connor, Paddy Durkin, uh Owen McLaughlin, Owen McLaughlin, did Owen Owen go off with yeah. what looked like a Hamstring, up with a hamstring. The, sn- the sniper was out on Saturday night, so Lee Gannon and <laughs> bloody Owen McLaughlin. And Owens looked bad, it, it did look bad. Uh, and he, he was having such a good game. Oh, he was, he so... was unbelievable, Lee, wasn't yeah, he? Like yeah. the injection of pace and Brilliant. the. Searing pace. He took off at one stage, and I don't know, was it Brian Stack or who or someone was trying to keep up with just him? And he frontal. just took yeah. off. He yeah. is. He's some weapon on that way. His, his decision making was better on Saturday than it had been as well. So I thought he was under a bit of pressure. He did really well for me. And that's that's an unfortunate injury picked up. So yeah, for me, Mayo would be happy. Um going into the last two league games, whether they put out full squads or are they going to give game time to a lot of players that probably haven't seen a lot? I think it's a good position for them to be in. Uh, but it's still still for me, there's still a couple of question marks over over attack and play and style and bits like that. But I'd have to say I, I was just bitterly disappointed with Scotland. It really was that second half. You know, Jim Worth in the first half was brilliant, kicked absolute some crackers in the, in the first half. And I was thinking we might have an actual game here. Hmm. Second half, the effort and the fall off of even just, just tracking people was just, it was mind-boggling to be honest. And I'd say David Burke was frothing on sideline with some of the effort from his players in that second half because um, it just wasn't good enough looking in from the sideline for me, to be honest. So, um. It's going to have a lot of work to do. Um, we brought into the last weekend for, for relegation game. So, um, yeah, interesting stuff. They still look like the most likely side to be going down, Rory. Yeah, they do. And it, it, it was always going to be a, diff, a difficult season for them. They had a lot of players with Sigerson. Bridget's went on a good run, as we know. He had a stop-start nature to his preparation they probably needed maybe everybody on board from the get-go. There was a really good start to this game. I mean, it was some really high-quality scores from both teams. I think 11 of the first 12 scores came from play. And Lee mentions about possibly Mayo needing, you know, that marquee forward. Sure, do you need a marquee forward when you have a goalkeeper kicking points from play with the outside of his right from about 45 metres in Atlantic hurricanes? And he was a full forward for years. Right. Yeah. Was he? Oh, he used to be full right. forward. Okay, yeah, okay. so, so Colum actually was at the May under 21 team, the one though. Some, some point now, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So I think, look, uh, uh, the co-commentator described Niall Daly as he was coming on as a side door. And I think that's what that's what Ross Common needed. They were 20 minutes in and they were being beaten all ends up. It was 7-2. And then they got a real good burst on and they managed to pull the, the game back to 7-6. And they played with really good spirit. Classic Ross Common, flying into every tackle. But then the second half started and the first 10 or 15 minutes, no, just not too dissimilar to Monaghan, actually. They just wilted and, you know, Mayo 
did what Mayo Mayo did a really professional job in the end. Yeah. And and just put them away. And there is a gap, I think, between the two teams. I think in many ways it was kind of it had a feel of what Mayo might would have probably done to Ross Common in the championship last year. I, I'd be careful, Ray. I, I would be really, really careful. Um, in what sense? Well, we all things go to plan. We have Ross Common in, in a semi-final. In a uh, semi. So yeah. my, my point my point is we've been in this position before with the, the number of years. And I remember 19 and you look at last year. Last year. I, I, last year, yeah. Mm. I think it'd be very, very um a bad move to put Ross Common, you know, in that oh, position because they, they right. come into that Mayo game and I, I'm not joking it's like when they play a Mayo goal in kind of championship they, they, their levels of intensity mm-hmm. just rise to the roof so I would be very cautious uh, I'd say in your know, coming in a really bad position they are in oh, terms no. of the league but the I championship would... you know so um, and 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 my point is they they backed up by beating Galway and Roscommon regularly over the last few years. So yeah, championship. And and look, their their main man, Enda Smith, didn't probably have his greatest game. You know, his form will obviously return. There's no like it was it was a tough night. Now, in fairness, it was proper winter football. No, I don't think Roscommon will be have anything to be unduly worried come championship. They are obviously a Sam Maguire team, but um. They're going to find it hard to maintain their Division 1 status yeah. now, given their last two games. Yeah. Let's finish off on Division 2 then, because I think this maybe looks a little bit more straightforward now. Donegal and Armagh winning at the weekend probably separates them from the pack in a way. That draw between Cavan and Meath might have some implications as well, though. Huge win for the Cork footballers as well, and Kildare definitely on the brink. I think taking the... Donegal picture out of it you know the five point win against Louth not a whole lot to talk about I did think what was most interesting that came out of it Lee was Jim McGuinness's post-match comments when he starts talking about tactical fouling and how it's ruining the game and I was thinking anytime you see a manager coming out and trying to set an agenda like this it's definitely for further down the field not for the right now you know uh, Jim is my games he's always thinking ahead uh, I thought it was interesting okay like I would mind Donny Goller as good as any, I'd say. <laughs> I was <laughs> thinking. Right. Yeah. Um, but that's, I think that's, if that's Jim's level of authority around thinking, right, where can I get that edge? And not not for league in that first challenge game. Where can I get those little nuggets of, of edges on, on on any team? So I think just, just Jim's so smart around how he's Well, they're going to be a counter-attacking team, aren't they? Yes, really? yeah, yeah. Yeah, they are. They are. Uh, do you know what? I thought Clyde gave me enough for this game. I didn't think they rolled over. And uh, just D- Donegal always had that bit of class about them. Paddy McGrady he looked really good. He actually Paddy McGrady looks brilliant this year. Yeah, he looks. He looks happy. He looks sharp. He and, and again, it's a sign of Jim's approach to, to to the philosophy he wants to play with. So I think Donegal just did what that to do. So, but I for me, Derry or sorry, Donegal are thinking down the line and Jim makes no bones about that they're looking at the first round of the championship uh, like they've done all they need to do in, in, in Division 2 up to now uh, I expect them to play our man a couple of weeks in, in that league decider and I think that'll be an interesting game go to plan obviously but I think that'll be interesting if Donegal go full core that game uh, in preparation for that Ulster Championship game Um, so I've been impressed with Donegal um, I have been up to now I think the scores they've been putting up maybe outside their man games with four have been just huge and that's not something I would associate with Donegal particularly last year they were so so poor in, in, in offence so Jim has done great work there so far but but there's still a good bit of work to do I think they're still they probably are still limited in terms of their game plan because you're on a bit counter attacking um, can they evolve that a bit more because uh, I think the likes of a dairy would be too smart for that and, and they'll have their pick it if they don't they'll adapt a bit more to what they have mm. Yeah. Jackie, Jackie, one thing though that it, and it's a really interesting point you make in relation to Jim McGuinness's comments because I see Colm Keyes has followed up with a piece in today's Irish Independent in and around how he feels it may be an easy win for this new football review committee to address that potential um, cynical uh, cynical play in Gaelic football by bringing in a really harsh penalty for somebody that does look to try and impede or pull down or drag or block a quick counter-attack by bringing in an AFL-style 50-metre penalty or potentially a penalty itself. Now, I think they're something that is something that potentially could be looked at if because the game has largely become a counter-attacking game. It is 15 against 15 one side, and it's, this is even happening at club level. 
somebody gets a hand in, somebody gets a ball, then there's three or four runners looking to break really quickly and then that's where you get caught and that's when we end up having so many games allowed the keeper these days. So I think it, it's it's an interesting point that Jim makes, a good follow-up today. I thought Paul Flynn spoke really well on the subject on Sunday night's program on Alliance League Sunday in relation to this review committee because I suppose, look, Everybody has ideas and everybody has suggestions around what should happen, etc. And that's all fine. That's a, a discussion for another day. A bugbear of mine is in the GAA, far too often, a rule comes in. And that's grand now. That's grand now. The rule is in now and away we go. And there's no, right, let's see what, let's, let's take stock after 12 months. Do we need to do a little tweak here? Do we need to do a little tweak there? Does the black card need to be improved? Do you need to add a definition? Do you need to take a word out? Do you, do you, follow, do you know what I mean? It's, it's S simplistic changes, I think. You're, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. It, 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 it's about sitting on this as opposed to, right, for instance, like sometimes hip decisions are made that are just utterly daft. The advanced mark has added nothing to the game whatsoever in my view why wasn't that just dispensed with when everybody feels that it's a bit of a blight and it actually say it won't be around for much longer yeah and hopefully and hopefully that's the case but I just find look what, what people's ideas and there's brilliant people on this committee I just hope that to follow up on what Paul said and I think it's a really good point is that they actually remain in the job for a good few years and tweak as they go because this won't be some sort of silver bullet one size fits all fix it right so if Donegal are going up then Lee can you see Cavan doing anything to stop Armagh because they obviously have that game yeah. in two weeks time now at the athletic grounds where given that Armagh had that draw last weekend maybe there is still a window the winner of that game is probably going up you know barring anything crazy happening the last day do you think Cavan have a chance Oh, absolutely, Jack. I think yeah. this showed enough against Donegal earlier in the year that they should have got a result from that game, to be honest. Um, I don't think people have talked about Cavan half enough and how impressive they have been this campaign to now, to be honest. Like at the start of the year, probably people would have, the assumption was, you know, new management, what sort of bounce would they get? Well, I tell you, they've answered all those questions emphatically, to be honest. Mm. And I keep reference, you know, their junior, our band, the junior, and I think that's just the riding on the, on the crest of a wave at the moment. I think they're doing so much good stuff at the moment. And they have a forward. They have a forward that can score well. Paddy Lynch for me has just been brilliant. Uh, he six points the weekend again and and a guy that's just playing with real confidence. So Ray McGalligan has done a brilliant job. So I think they'll go into the Armagh game, Jackie, with full of confidence and, and expect them to win that game. Uh, that's going to be a tough test for Armagh. Uh, make no bones about that. And I think Cavan will give them a right game. I still think Armagh are just a little bit further in the track considering what they've played and what they've come through the last couple of years. Um. And I keep looking at Armagh and some of the players they have. And, 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 you know, the, it's the excitement, I think, with Armagh sometimes that we probably get lost with, with some of the results they have and, and, and some of the games they played last year. I think they're such exciting players to just adapt with and, and play with. And Kieran McGinney looks a bit more happier this year than he has in other years, um, which is which has been refreshing, to be honest. So, yeah, Cavan have made great strides. But I, I still think they're just below the Donegals and, and their man of this world. Uh, but but for me, a serious progression in Division 2 this year, just probably maybe just lacking what Armagh have in terms of that squad depth, that quality, and, and that Division 1 kind of ethos that Armagh have had for the last few years. Makes an interesting... Uh, Paddy's weekend, Jackie. Yeah. You, you've got kind of a mini Ulster League going on yeah. where you have two Ulster teams competing to stay in Division 1 and two Ulster teams competing to get up there into Division 1. Tyrone Monaghan, losers probably relegated. And Armagh Cavan, the winner, potentially promoted. So I think it'll be a fascinating day, five o'clock and a half, seven throw in for the two of those. I'm presume there's that well there'll, there'll certainly be at least one of them on TV. So not bad yeah. for uh Bank Yeah, yeah, yeah great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But actually what's one thing is interesting we're on a cabin actually but like me as well have been brilliant. Like you know Bri you, brilliant you know, like the Sterler campaign you're thinking oh this is just going to be absolute did you hear Kevin Should saying you, that yeah, like, they were, did you hear Kevin or sorry call him after the game they were going for beers on the way <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and rightly deserved because yeah. <laughs> the, the turnaround they've had it's funny that that loud uh, result has just plumbed them into a brilliant position yeah. uh, confidence is brilliant 
they're playing playing well. They've got results. They're safe in Division Two, you know. So and yeah. they're playing another team now. Two weeks time, brim full of confidence as well. Exactly. So <laughs> fair play to Colin, but like whatever the beer talker is saying, but it, it's working a treat. So like that's that's some turnaround from their first two games, guys. You know that's that's brilliant for Colin working and and this squad there. So. Yeah, you're right. And look, given the Talton Cup win last year as yeah. well, they just have the safety net of everything safe in Division 2, flying for championship. Speaking of then, Rory, let's talk about the Cork footballers. Big boost for them. You know, Lee's laughing, but this is the one that's going to save their season. Yeah, yeah, it was um, it was a mad game, a five-goal thriller. Uh, <laughs> 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 you know. Oh, listen, it was... Um, it was an odd game. Like it was kind of played at a blistering pace to start. And you could feel the level of urgency in both teams play, considering I think both teams knew the significance of the game. I felt for the cameraman, by the way, because the way the sun was shining on one half of the field, you couldn't actually see anything on the near side. Great goal for Kildare early on, really settled them down. Cork were a bit more ponderous in their attacks. That's not exactly a new tune. Um, Feely with an incredible score in the 15th minute and straight away then Cork were facing an uphill task and they were ripped to shreds at the back twice for both goals Daniel Flynn was buzzing yeah. possession wise it was close but every time Kildare went into the Cork full forward line you were thinking trouble now the Cork scored a goal just before half time which kind of settled them down and then they came out in the second half and for the first 10 or 15 minutes they really went to town and played some great football to be fair Connor Corbett certainly uh, showed glimpses of what people would expect from him. They have a couple of really good... I'll tell you what Cork have, Jackie. Cork have some of the components of a really top team, but just not all of the pieces of the pie. Mm. They've got blistering. They've got really. They've got pace in the likes of the Maddie Taylors and Luke Fahies. And, you know, they've got play players that can, with searing pace, they have a bit of athleticism. They have one or two dainty forwards but just not enough not enough pieces in no. the overall jigsaw to really compete to win championships no well, they, they've got, and, 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 and will still need a point minimum from yeah. their remaining two games away to me the home to Armagh to stay in this league I think I, I don't think they've shown enough quality either in, in Division 2 um, yeah, yeah. Roy and that's that's not they're lacking a little bit is that, that just that yeah. bit of quality um, yeah listen and, and the one thing I would probably give Cork a bit of goodness on is they have been competitive and they just didn't get results where I have to say that's maybe there is their lack of effort in some of the games where Cork have been competing well just lacking that quality and uh, you're probably they're just probably missing a couple of key links the, the, the whole plan uh, yeah. but what about that catch from Callum yeah, yeah. Superman stuff to Corbin. Like that's but that's the kind of stuff that you love to see. Like John, it's few far between, but, but but from their point of view, like it was great to see Daniel Flynn early on. I thought this is just gonna be he's gonna run riot. Uh and you know, like we want to see him do well. I, I really want to see Daniel Flynn catch get catch that plane again because what he can do is just such it's just brilliant to watch. Uh and then all of a sudden clear race away and then they just start giving turnover after turnover after turnover and they just got punished and when Cora push up with their kick out particularly in the second half it was it was curtains and uh, Claire could never get back into the game as a result yeah they, they were plucky they stuck at it but I just felt Cork always once they pull away with the four point cushion they were never going to um, give, give it away again so uh, Claire in a whole world of pain I'm afraid um, yeah. and one or both and one or both of them one or both, absolutely one of Cork or Kildare is being relegated, but possibly both still. Because you have to bear in mind, Louth play for Mana next, who sit on three, three yeah. and two. So one Again. of them is one of them is going to end up on five points, potentially four, and they both have Cork on the head to head. So it may turn out to be the classic case of two bald men fighting over a comb in Parky Cueve last Sunday. We'll see, I suppose, over the next couple of weeks. Yeah, no, no, both teams still with a no. Question for you, Rory. I have a question for you. Was there a need to play that game in, in super value at the weekend? Uh, just looking at the attendance, I just thought it looked shocking for, from a, from an ops perspective. You know, you're looking a, in, you know, like it's a very good point. It, it, in real terms, no. And what you would actually there's a couple of things, right? Ultimately, you would prefer, like what a lot of other counties do, is take your key games way down into the heart like if you had a, a a ground that could host maybe three to four to five thousand people down in West Cork that's exactly where you want to be taken uh, particularly Ulster teams because they'll get a real flavour of what Cork football is like when they go down that to those necks of the woods the issue is you've your premiums 
you view premium tickets sold for people that you know have a contract in place and they will have a certain amount of games on that and you I suppose you have no choice but to stage your intercounty fixtures in Parky Cueve as a result doesn't I think that, I, I would have, I would assume that's the case yeah it doesn't look great like even the whole optics of it like it, yeah it like I mean Christy Wing Park you, but you have Christy Wing Park there as well now if you have if you, if you throw the three or four thousand that were there into, into Christy Wing Park it's a brilliant atmosphere because it's a nice cosy tight ground it's actually where most of the Cork footballers would play all their club football isn't that yeah. right Jackie yeah so it's a different kettle of fish and it's a, like I know it's a place that I know opposition teams hate because the dressing rooms are dang cold wet and miserable but sure it's all right come yeah exactly <laughs> yeah. Uh, last word on them Lee do you think they can survive Cork I, I do think they can yeah I do I really do um like they're they, they've two results now back to back, so they're in a bit of form. Similar to me, they, they've turned things around and it's all Fly, it's flying off to Portugal today. Okay, nice. Um, it's good for some, but mm. we'll see how that that turns out. But but definitely they can. Uh, from, they have a great opportunity, but but it's going to be such an interesting couple of rounds there for from the bottom half division too. I think you're seeing the spread of quality in division two in terms of the top end and what we're what we're going to get and gets nearly settled to some degree. Yeah, the Cabinet game again would be really interesting, but. The bottom half is just worth all that. It just it's just pandemonium down there at the moment. I I, I feel Clara are definitely doomed, uh, yeah. irrespective irrespective of, of potentially this or that. I, I just think look them as an overall uh, overall. I just think there's just no way you can see them getting out of this. But but Cork have a great opportunity. And they put themselves in a good position to do it. Um can they back it up now in, in, in Saturday or Sunday week with that with that performance against Gil there? Yeah. yeah. All right. None, none well, of us do. Yeah, no. Well, that's that's, that's, that's the, the, the magic. The two teams are such enigmas. You don't know what they could do. Yeah. Like they're, they're just they're, like if you told me Kildare would race into one whatever one seven or one five whatever in the in the, in the court game. I said we just stop. Even getting a goal for Kildare was was a bonus, you know. So um, you just don't know what the, the particular two teams they just could do anything. Yeah, there too. Uh, Division two, just a bear pit as usual. Mm. Uh, lads, we'll have to leave it there, but thoroughly enjoyed the chats. Thanks a million for being with us, Lee. And we will chat to you later in the week, everyone. Possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over.